By now, you've been living as a woman full-time for seven years, but still feel incomplete. So after months of harrowing psychological testing, doctors finally permit you to have Australia's very first publicly recognised sex change operation. And while many Australians are initially outraged by it, you couldn't be happier. I'm a girl, that's it. So I thought I may as well do something about it. And I went, I heard about surgery being done, but um, I'd seen a lot of operations done that weren't successful. And I wasn't going to have it done unless it was successful. So I waited. And uh, um, then I finally got it done and it's been very successful. Well, I'm happy anyway. You're overjoyed with the results of the operation and finally feel a real woman. Your happiness is topped off when you fall in love for the first time. And he doesn't care what gender you are, does he? No. At the time. In 1976, you appear in a satirical drag pantomime based on Cinderella. I did, yeah. You play one of the ugly sisters. Your other stepsister joins us along with Cinderella and her wicked stepmother. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Maggie Kirkpatrick, David Williams and Ronnie Arnold. <laughs> You must be joking. <laughs> 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 As I get you out of the blue mouth. Don't, don't you bring no bad news. <laughs> <laughs> no bad news. And this woman. <laughs> and Maggie, how did you get involved in Cinderella? Well, you might ask of a serious actor, Mike. <laughs> well, you might ask. It seems that the... Uh, the uh, female illusionist who was cast as the other ugly sister had a bit of a hissy fit and took off somewhere, didn't she? So I was roped in to do this and I was worked like a dog by these two for about a week to learn all these routines. And of course, in a drag show you have to mime. Well, that's completely foreign to me, as you can well see, as you can see. And so opening night came and all is da-da, 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 and the music's playing and I forgot, my mouth was firmly closed. For once, my mouth was firmly closed. And this one, in a very loud stage whisper, said, Mime, you stupid bitch, mime! <laughs> As Cinderella, you used to play tricks on the audience, didn't you? Well, I began to say, OK, I'll give you a minty if you can tell me which of my ugly sisters was born a man and which was born a woman. And of course, they always got it wrong. They always picked Maggie. <laughs> They always pick Maggie as the man and Carlotta as the girl. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Can't win them all, mate. No. <laughs> Ronnie, uh, Carlotta has always been a great storyteller, hasn't she? Well, there was one story in particular that she told, and it was about a drag queen who had a silicon uh, implant in her breast. And um, the, in those days, they used to stick the needle under this flesh. Uh, not like today where they do it the bags, okay. She was told when, not to drink and when she goes to bed to lie flat on her back. Well, uh, <laughs> she was so excited by the silicon implant, she had a few drinks. Then she had a few more drinks and then she got really rotten and she passed out. Uh, when she woke up the next morning, the breasts were underneath the armpit <laughs> and she had a goiter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. 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 in your mid-thirties, you jump at the chance to travel to London and appear in the drag review called You'll Never Believe It. The stage shows are total sellouts, but despite their success, you're not happy and head home. On your return, you and your partner exchange vows and you settle down to life as a suburban housewife. Mm -hmm. But you're not out of the spotlight for long before accepting an invitation to tour New Zealand with Lay Girls in 1987. But the strain of work and the fact that you can never have children finally tear you and your man apart, your great love. Because you've always desperately wanted to be a parent, haven't you? I just adore kids. I think they're the greatest asset on earth. Uh, I, his brother came to Australia and he had kids, so I decided that, uh, look, he should have kids too. So I walked out on the relationship. It's 1996, you're 52, and recruit five drag queens for your own touring stage show called Carlotta and Her Beautiful Boys. The tour kicks off in Sydney before you head for the Outback, 
and thousands of Aussies relish your unique brand of glamour. The next year, you're invited to join the TV panel show Beauty and the Beast. Your life experience makes you a crucial member of the team and hundreds of confused and scared viewers write to you for advice. Thanks to the popularity of the show, you now enjoy renewed fame. And here tonight are Beast Stan Zamanik and Beauties Jeannie Little and Prue McSween. <laughs> Stan, it must have been very difficult or different for you to be working with a beauty who changed his sex. Well, I've got to tell you, for the whole time she was on the program, I kept on asking her the one question, <laughs> is it still in the pickle jar? He wanted now, to borrow it. Yeah. <laughs> I need a penis extension. He was mesmerised. <laughs> because, so. Jeannie, you were forever... Um, Eat, trying to outdo each other in outfits. Be, Carl, Lotter, and outfits. Actually, darling, I went to Lake Girls when I was 15, and, and, and truly, and honestly, I just thought all that glamour, all those gorgeous rhinestones, sequins, feathers, and everything. So when Carlotta joined the, the show, uh, Beauty and the Beast, I thought, I've got to be over the top and everything more and more. There's going to be so much glamour with Carlotta. So she came in with her hair in a smart bob and a corporate <laughs> jacket, and I ended up being the drag queen. <laughs> And for you, you met Carlotta when you were on the show. That's when you first met her. Yes, we became, the Beast. Yeah, we became great friends. In fact, I made a big mistake though. Once she said to me, I'll do your makeup. We were going somewhere and she said, I'll do your makeup. And I ended up looking more like a drag queen than anyone <laughs> I've ever met. <laughs> Thanks for all coming in. Thank Great you. Great. You gorgeous, you look stunning. You continue your successful tour with the beautiful boys for three years, but still you yearn for some form of motherhood despite it being physically impossible. And there are two people whom you do consider to be your children. You've been a lot more than just our Auntie Carol. It's your best friend's daughters, <laughs> Dean and Coyne Mahoney. Uh Uh, oh, Joy, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> they are my babies. Um, oh, God. Um, um, <laughs> Dean, you've travelled all the way from Scotland, ladies and gentlemen, to be here tonight. Yes, I have. <laughs> I wouldn't have missed it for the world. <laughs> it's obvious that Carlotta is a very special person in your life. Yes, that's right. Uh, Carol... Well, Carlotta has been so much more to us than uh, what you see on the stage. This is our Auntie Carol. She is as much of part of our family as anybody else is to us. And uh, she's very special to me, and she's very special to my fiancé who came to Australia last year to visit and to ask not just my father, but also for Auntie Carol's permission to marry me. <laughs> and she gave it? Yes, she did, thank God. <laughs> With a lot of inspection. <laughs> Especially the bank book. <laughs> and, uh, Annie Carol, you promised to do a uh, Scottish fling for me at my wedding next year. And did I, I? Yes, <laughs> and I'm here to make sure you keep your promise. I'm not standing next to your short-ass <laughs> mother doing a bloody Scottish fling. <laughs> 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 up to here. I look like Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Cool, you, you actually had uh, Auntie Carol helped you educate a, a classroom of seven-year-olds? Show and tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sister Loretta and the other little Catholic girls were very impressed with Carol there and Santa's helper, Jack draped in cellophane with a big green bow, a couple of silver pasties and a bikini in the arms of an elf. Um, <laughs> The kids were confused about me anyway, and they used to bring, like, frogs in jars and things, but no, I had Auntie Carol wrapped in cellophane. <laughs> Girls, would you care to take a seat with yes, your Auntie thank Carol? Thank you, Thank you. Carlotta, alone and confused, you survived childhood abuse to always courageously be true to yourself. 
And as Australia's diva of drag, never afraid to laugh at yourself as you entertain so many. Carlotta, this is your life. <laughs> Our guests choose to stay at the Shangri-La Hotel Sydney. <laughs> <laughs>